Welcome to this interview with the uh, new head of the United Nations Mission in South Sudan, uh, Mr. David Shira. Welcome uh, to this first interview on Radio Mariah and also welcome to South Sudan. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here and it's nice to have my entry point into uh, South, Sudan, South Sudan and uh, Radio Mariah. Yes, and um, we are curious. Who is David Shira? <laughs> uh, well, I won't give you the long version. I'll give you the short version. Um, I'm a New Zealander. So my country, unlike South Sudan, is surrounded by water rather than other, other countries. So it's much simpler in many ways. Um, I grew up in New Zealand. I've worked overseas for 20 years in various countries around the world, both with um, different uh, humanitarian organizations, but more recently with the United Nations. And most recently in the Middle East, in West Bank, Gaza, um, Lebanon, and Iraq. But I also spent some time most recently in New Zealand as a member of parliament. So I was a political figure, an elected political figure. Uh, and for a time I was the uh, leader of the largest, uh, well, the, the oldest party in New Zealand, um, it, it, the Labour Party uh, in, in, in parliament. And uh, probably you have picked up some words in Arabic when you were in the Middle East. I, I did a little bit, but boy, it, it, was, it was pretty rusty. But I, I will say that um, one of the things that I remember most when I'm looking back in my life was a, a time when I was much, much younger in 1981 when I took, uh, I traveled to South Sudan. And it was a time um, when it was possible to travel on the Nile, and I took a boat uh, with some a couple of friends from Kosti, just south of Khartoum, and came down the Nile to to Juba. So when I was wanting, when I was uh, told I had the the job here, I was very curious to see how Juba had changed yeah. in, in that time. And and I have to say, I it's uh, it bears no relation to what I remember. It's it's developed. It's uh, it's bustling. It's got major traffic problems, which I don't remember from before. <laughs> there are a few cars. <laughs> so uh, so the city has developed a lot. Yeah. yeah. So that brings me to the question about your impressions at your arriving in the country. Well, first, um, the the people of South Sudan that I've met, and that's the government officials, but just people that I've um, bumped into, have been incredibly welcoming. So. The South Sudanese have a reputation of being welcoming and warm, uh, friendly people, and that's certainly the impression that I've had so far. Mm. So, so far, the the um, I guess the my first impressions is that um, it, this is a country with extraordinary potential, with um, wonderful people. Uh, it's a new country, um, and it's finding its way. And I guess my, from my point of view, is it's it's a it's a matter of looking at ways in which we can help the country um, along that journey. Now you have come here as the head of the mission uh, and uh, succeeding the former uh, head uh, Helen Margaret Lodge, and uh, you have met government officials, of course, and mm -hmm. I think you concluded with visiting and seeing the president uh, yesterday or the day before, I think. So uh, from these visits, what uh, do you see uh, in terms of relationships between the mission and the government? Well, I, I both with all of the, uh, the meetings that I've had with a, a sort of an order of the foreign minister, the vice president, the first vice president, the cabinet minister, and yesterday I spent uh, a long period with um, President Keir. Um, I think the, my, my uh, message was to them was that I'm coming uh, from outside of the country. I'm, I'm new. I'm in listening mode. I want to hear what they've got to say and you know what their advice is. I'm also coming at a time when the head of the United Nations, the Secretary General Guterres, has, has come in. And I spoke to him on the phone a couple of nights ago, and he was very much wanting to to get uh, to at pains to, to to express that he wanted to have a good relationship with uh, president Kerr and with the with with south sudan so it's a in, a, in some ways it's a it's a little bit of a new page for the for the for the un and, and our relationship um once again all of the ministers and certainly the president that i when i when i met him yesterday uh were welcoming 
Uh, they were warm. My uh, message to them was that the the UN here in South Sudan is here to help the country move forward. Uh, we respect the extraordinary fight and the journey that South Sudan has come to gain its sovereignty as a as a as a small nation. The 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 way that it's run and the way the country is run is, is up to the government and its people. That's not something for the United Nations. We're here to support. And I think the success of that support will be when the UN comes to leave. Uh, yeah. Certainly the peacekeeping mission comes to leave. And it would be wonderful if we got to the point where we felt that we were no longer necessary. Uh, that to me would be my, uh, the, the uh, I guess, the, the biggest indicator of my success here in the country if I was able to do that. So what would be like your first top three priorities given the mandate you have? Well, I'm um, very keen to travel uh, to the regions of South Sudan. Um, so before um, setting out a, a you know a, a exact plan, I, 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 I want to try and do that. So I'm heading up uh, in north up into Malakal uh, next week. I, I'm going to I have a program of, of moving right around the country over the next uh, month or so. But I, I, I guess the the overall point that I would make is that the UN is here to support the, the South Sudanese people and to uh, to support the uh, a government of national unity to be able to move forward to help bring uh, peace and stability to the country and then uh, enable uh, a lot of the work, the good work that's uh, that's going on here to be able to you know, create the, de the opportunities, the development opportunities that, that South Sudan needs. So there's some emergency and humanitarian things that we need to do first, but I would like to think that if we can get peace and stability in the country, then that humanitarian need will slowly disappear and we can then uh, move into some of the infrastructure projects, for example. I mean, President Keir said to me, roads, uh, major, major f um, priority for him. Uh, we've got uh, engineering battalions in, as part of uh, our peacekeeping mission. Yeah. They're working on the roads at the moment. I'd like to accelerate those because they are, you know, they're, they're the, it's the lifeline and it creates the business opportunities where you've got roads and infrastructure, then business exactly. follows. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you've come after uh, af after uh, the july i mean the conflict yes. and that has uh, really shaken the peace agreement and shaken also the confidence of the world about the prospects of peace in the country uh, then it was uh, followed by the decision to deploy the rpf in the country that mm -hmm. is the regional protection force where are we at the moment um, well, this is something exactly as you say. Following July, there was a, a decision by the Security Council to um, put in place here the RPF. Uh, it's it's a, a force which is here to be able to create greater confidence for people to come back to Juba and create the conditions of stability. Uh, it's here to help the people, uh, uh, you know, to, to work alongside the, the the government of South Sudan as well. Um, we're in uh, discussions, basically finalising some discussions on where and when and those sorts of things. So uh, my expectation is well, that it's 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 imminent. When you when you're bringing in four thousand people, um, it's not easy. Th there's a, there's a lot of work to be done. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of people behind the scenes doing an enormous amount of putting an enormous amount of effort in. But from what I understand, and the president said this to me yesterday, that uh, certainly they um, are welcoming of it and uh, we'll just finalise the details. So you will be heading to the African Union Summit. Yes. Uh, in, I, think, I think it's tomorrow or something uh, in Addis Ababa. And uh, what is there for, for, for the mission and for the UN community that is in the country at the moment? Well, the, um, it's, it's, it's going to be an important uh, place where you know African leaders from right across Africa come, and particularly from the region, come to one place. So it's a, a great opportunity to, to meet a number of people in a very short space of time. I mean, I think in some ways these, 
these sub these summits are more important for the opportunities they have for communications than anything else. But having spoken to the Secretary General a couple of nights ago on the on the phone, uh, he's keen to meet with uh, President Keir when he's when he's there. So the Secretary General has met him on several times before in his previous role as the High Commissioner for Refugees. So he'll renew his contacts with President Keir. Um, and then there's a another side meeting where the uh, the UN and the African Union and EGAD will will meet and and just discuss the possibilities of support to the peace process and where we go from here. So it's it, it's more of an opportunity to to get together and and see and look at the ways forward and and get get some common positions. As it uh, as it will be the first time the people might be hearing you speaking directly uh, in an interview on the radio. Uh, what would you like to say, given the few days you have been here? Well, look, I'd first like to say thank you very much for to everybody who have, um, have given me such a warm welcome. Um, I'm certainly going to do my best to for, for the mission, for the UN, and for the, most importantly, for the people of South Sudan. Um, I've looked forward to coming here. Um, so far, it's been, uh, as I say, it's been very enjoyable, and I really look forward to working with everybody here to uh, to take us to take us all forward. So, um, once again, uh, uh, it, I'm, I'm really looking forward to to my time here. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. David Shira, head of the UN Mission in South Sudan. Welcome. Thank you very much, and thank you once again. Thank you. You're welcome again. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.